Hey everyone, Techni here with a review of the top five budget gaming mice. Now all these mice are under 50 bucks and at the end of this video I have quite a few runner-ups down there as well that I just couldn't really squeeze in and we'll talk about those at the end. But again, this video has been really hard for me to kind of wrap my head around because all five of these mice are fantastic. So I have I had to take it as which one I would prefer to use daily. Not necessarily as far as build and features and stuff like that, but again, the majority of this is gonna be based on shape and your grip and play style. So whenever you're watching this video, again, don't think that I'm talking about this one last, is gonna be just like a piece of junk, and number one is like, you know, this world-changing best mouse. It's really based upon grip style, and I think we have multiple grips in here or sizes that are gonna suit everybody. But anyways, let's go on and see which one's gonna suit me first, and you can pick out of them which one's gonna suit you. All right, so number five coming in for me is a Razer Viper Ultimate. And again, you can kind of sum up what I just said right now, starting with number five as the Viper Ultimate. This mouse is incredibly solid, but when we look at the dimensions and everything, this is one tiny mouse, especially for me, definitely clear as day, all day long, a fingertip mouse right here. Maybe a little bit of claw, but not much at all for me. It always goes into fingertip. If you have smaller hands, I think this is gonna be an absolute fantastic buy for you. You know what I mean? Again, if you have smaller hands, the side buttons are very nice and crispy. They stick out to the side a bit. Nice finger grooves up front, nice recessed scroll wheel. Absolutely fantastic. Now that's using the Razer Speedflex cable, but this cable is definitely not the best. I mean, it's quite tight. It's almost the same as a rubber cable, except it's uh, braided, you know what I mean? So definitely slap a bungee in this, or if you got some spare change, go on and pick up a paracord and you really complete this mouse. Now, as far as performance and features on the Viper Mini, absolutely spot on as far as performance with the sensor right there. Pretty nice big PTFE feet on the bottom, no drag whatsoever. And you do have RGB on this guy as far as the logo, and then right underneath on the backside right down there. Now, of course you have Razer Synapse, but you all know I can't stand synapse because it doesn't save the rgb to the mouse you have to have synapse open that's a real stinker for me right there but again you can just flick it to off and it'll always stay off right there so what a way to start right coming in at number five the viper mini such a solid mouse and i recommend this mouse all the time in the comments at 39 bucks I mean, what a steal. It's fantastic. If you like that grip style, right? You got bigger hands or whatever, again, this is gonna be straight up fingertip. You got smaller hands, I think it'll suit you a lot better right there. But if you're dedicated fingertip, you like that flipping and dipping real fast, fingertip win all day long. An absolutely fantastic mouse at $40. All right, so next up coming in at number four is the egg. The Logitech G203 and a Logitech G305. We have the wired version and the wireless version. So again, as far as shape, the exact same. But these mice are very solid. Great build, fantastic build. The sides has a little bit more of a grippy coating than the top and the buttons, but again, very nice and cozy. Again, both of them the exact same build. Now, when you get different is with the weight. The wired one, clearly a little bit lighter than the wireless one. That's because you had that stinking double A in the background. I recommend you getting a lithium battery for this. It really reduces the weight, or you can do that triple A trick right there. Me personally, I prefer the wireless, again, just because you don't have wires. Speaking of the wire on the 203, it's just your basic standard rubber cable. Slap it in a bungee and you'll be good to go, you know? It's, it pretty much feels the exact same, maybe even a little bit looser than the Viper's wire right there, believe it or not. So again, if you can paracord it if you like. Also on the two, uh, 203, you do have RGB. On the 305, you do not. But as far as buttons one and two and scroll wheel, the exact same, very nice and crispy. The side buttons on these mice, are a little smushy, not bad by any means. Again, they stick out a nice amount, very tactile, but again, you kind of get that uh, controller vibe from them, you know? They, they just feel a little bit smushy, but not deal-breaking by any means. But again, going right in line with the Viper Mini, why this mouse is at number four for me is it is primarily a fingertip mouse for me. Now, I can pull this one into a little bit more of a claw here and there, you know what I mean? I mean, it's tough again. I mean, primary 90% of the time, I'm in a fingertip grip on this. And again, I'm just not a fingertip grip fan. But if you are, again, a total winner right here. The build is solid across both of them, wired and wireless right here. The style, the uh, just the looks of it, I think they look absolutely awesome. But again, primarily a fingertip mouse. And a real shining point of both of these mice right here is the value. The 203 comes in at 40 bucks. The 305 comes in at 
50 bucks. And let me tell you, both of these mics are always on sale. So sometimes you can get the 305 for down around 45, 40 bucks, you know what I mean? So again, really great value right here. And I honestly love both of them. But again, that's why it's at number four for me is it's primarily a fingertip mouse. So if that's what you like, again, a complete fingertip win right here. All right, so coming in at number three right here, we have the Steel Series Rival 3. Number three, Rival 3. Ain't that funny? I didn't even think about that right there. But anyways, we have the wired version and the wireless version here. And let me tell you what, these mice are incredibly solid, a fantastic build. But we all know what comes along with that, right, is a little bit of weight. These are not the lightest mice out there, especially for the wired version. With the two AAA batteries it keeps in the back, it is clear as day, tail heavy. But you can use this mouse with one battery back there. But again, it's still a little bit tail heavy. The one downfall for both of these mice are the side buttons for me. Me at least right here. Again, they're just a little bit small. I like big, chunky, prominent side buttons there. I mean, I can clearly decipher these, but again, just a little bit smaller. As far as the rest of the buttons, very nice and clicky. Take a look at that nice recessed scroll wheel. Butter smooth right there. Nice and precise buttons. Now talking dimensions on the Rival 3 wired and wireless. They are a spitting image. They are the exact same. And this mouse again is primarily fingertip for me. If you got smaller hands, I think you can get a really nice claw on this guy. Now I can pull it into a nice relaxed claw and kind of dab with it. But when I get in heated moments, I tend to always go into a fingertip with this guy. If you got smaller hands, I think you can get a very nice palm on this guy. Cause I can actually put it in my palm but again, my hand kind of engulfs the entire mouse right here. Now, as far as underneath the mouse right here, as far as performance, absolutely spot on as far as my gameplay. Now, as far as the feet, by the way, smiley face, I mean, that just gives it a win right there, you know what I mean? But the feet, they could be a little bit thicker. As far as my use, again, I don't notice any drag or anything, but again, they're not the chunkiest down there, so some replacement feet might suit you well. Now, as far as the wireless, this, is, this just takes the cake right here. I absolutely love this. As you can see, you have Bluetooth and 2.4. That is a win all day long. You're talking 50 bucks right here. You can have the 2.4 synced up to your PC and the Bluetooth synced up to your Mac. Flick that switch, bam, right over to the other one right there. Talk about versatile mouse at 50 bucks. I stink and love that. Now, as you can see, the wired one has RGB on the tail end back there and then back on the logo, just pretty much like we saw in the Viper Mini. And then on the wireless version, the RGB is only on the scroll wheel. Now, as far as mouse to mouse right here, as you look at them, you can tell the wireless version has a little bit of a grainy texture. And then the uh, wired version is a little bit more smoother and a little texture in it, but not near as much as the wireless version, almost like a PBT keycap compared to an ABS keycap. That's exactly what it is right here. All right, so Steel Series Rival 3, the wireless version coming in at 50 bucks and the wired version coming in at 30 bucks. What an absolute steal. Again, the only reason it's down lower on the list for me is again, it's just a little bit smaller for me. You all know I like bigger mice, I like palm gripping, you know what I mean? But again, this mouse can work, again, for a relaxed cloth for me right here. The shining point of these mouse and the ones I'd recommend over them is the wireless one. I stink and love it. It's just an absolute value, the wireless version right here. At 50 bucks, I mean, with the Bluetooth and the 2.4, what an absolutely fantastic versatile for gaming or work. That's what I absolutely love about this one. But again, the wired version coming at 30 bucks, you can't go wrong here. All right, so coming in at number three right here is the Rokat Kane, the 102 and the 122. And you can get both of these in black or white or different variations right there. But let me tell you what, this has been one of my favorite mice right here and probably a serious underdog. I mean, many of you might have heard about it, but you just over glance it because it doesn't have holes and it's not from a you know really big company or whatever. I mean, Rokat's pretty big, but uh, you catch my drift right here. Let me tell you what, like seriously, before we even dive into this mouse, if you haven't try this mouse, 100% scoop this mouse up and try it. If you like that palm or claw grip right there, it is an absolute dream. And starting off with the build of both of these mice right here, the lower version of 102 and then the 122, these guys are stinking solid. You're not gonna catch a bit of creaking, cranking, or flex on these guys. Absolutely rock solid mice right here. But again, going right to the dimensions, like I just stated, this is a palm grip mouse. You, again, you can use that claw right there. Fingertip, eh, that's gonna be iffy, right? I can pull it into the fingertip, but again, with the size of this mouse, I tend to always go into that claw or that palm. But let me tell you what, as far as palm, it's just perfect. Again, it's just like swoops out right on the sides right here, but not dramatically like we've seen a lot of ergo mice. You kind of set it in your hand and it's just like, I'm telling you, it's a stinking glove if you like that palm grip. It's absolutely fantastic. 
That goes right into the buttons right here. As you can see, nice, big, chunky side buttons. I stinking love it. Absolutely fantastic. Very nice and crispy, right to the point right there. Scroll wheel, fairly recessed, nice and flat and crispy. Love it. DPI button right up there on both mice as well. So as you can see, the clearest day difference of both mice, again, with the 102, is you have that little texture on the side right there. Don't think of this as a nice, squishy, comfortable, grippy texture. It's not. It's, it, it, I'd say it's more annoying than uh, useful, you know what I mean? I do feel it on my fingers and I don't like it. Maybe scoop up some lizard skins and overlay it right there. I mean, it's not deal breaking or bad, but again, comparing it right to the 122 over here that's just butter smooth across the whole mouse, not slippery, but just smooth. Again, it kind of just makes me say, gosh, I wish they would have left those off right there. Also the 122, you have more RGB as far as your zone back there, and then your scroll wheel. Also on the 102, you have the scroll wheel. Now, as you can see, the clear as day, I have my 122 paracorded here and not my 102, because obviously I go to the 122. But believe it or not, I mean, neither of the cables are great, but the cable on the 102, just basic standard rubber cable, as we've seen on the other mice right here, slap this in a bungee and you'll be perfectly fine. Now the cable on the 122 is horrible. It is just bad. It's worse than the one on the 102. I mean, it is seriously stiff. So again, I slapped a paracord into this guy, prime time. And as far as performance underneath the mouse right here, both mice absolutely spot on. No delays or any lift off issues with me at least. Two very big chunky feet, Zowie-esque type style, no drag whatsoever. Perfect performance here. All right, so all in all, the Rocat Kane mouse right here, the 102 and 122, and I believe the, the numbers are different, like the 120 or whatever, again, black and white, whatever. There's no difference between the models. It's just a model number as far as color right there. But anyways, talking about these mice, it probably wasn't very fair for me to pull out the 122 right here. Regular MSRP on this guy is 70 bucks. But why I put it in here is again, it's such a great mouse and it is always on sale for 40 or 50 bucks, 49.99. Now it varies between the white and black version, but again, that's just color. I believe it's the black version that is usually on sale for 50 bucks. Now the 102, you can get this guy for 30 bucks. Regular MSRP, 50 bucks, but again, all day long, every day on Amazon, on sale for 30 bucks. All these links right down in the description, by the way. But again, talking about the difference right here, 30 to 50, I would say yes, save up to 20 bucks and get the uh, 122 here. It just feels just much better in the hand. Not saying this one's bad. Again, I just love the feel of that. The texture on the side right here, I'm not a fan of. Now, if it was the same on the side right here, I'd say, yeah, just go with this one, you know what I mean? Both of them can benefit from repair cord, but again, not needed. Definitely throw them into a bungee. But both of these mice, as far as palm or claw, an absolute steel, absolutely solid underdog mouse right here. All right, so coming in at number one right here is the HK Gaming Mira M and Mira S. Now, as we're looking at this mice, I know some people are probably saying, oh, I've heard there were some build issues. Let me tell you what, I got quite a few copies of the Mira M right here, and out of all of them, I had one issue with the scroller, and that was actually before they were mass produced, so I'm sure it's been fixed. But heck, if you got any issues, just exchange it on Amazon. But diving further into this mouse, the thing that's so great about it is, again, you have two options. You got the Mira S, which is incredibly tiny, way too tiny for me, but I can actually claw it, because again, you got that hump prominent in the middle, then it dips down, so I can claw this guy, but again, it's definitely thrown me into that primary fingertip. Coming over to the Mirror M, stinking love this. What this is, is a G Pro wireless shape, 100%, as far as the side buttons and everything, and it is a great shape. As you all know, G Pro wireless, very, very popular mouse. I can fingertip this, claw it, and palm it all comfortably. Now, as far as using the Mirror M and the Mirror S right here, again, same as G Pro Wireless as far as the side buttons, I love how these are pushed a little bit forward. If you're palming it or clawing it, perfect position right there. Nice, smooth, but tactile scroll wheel. Buttons are very crispy, and that goes for both of them, the S and the M. As far as the S, whenever you're fingertipping it, again, for me at least right here, these buttons are in the exact perfect position. Now, as far as underneath the mouse right here, sensor absolutely spot on, no lag delay or anything. Again, as well with this one, absolutely spot on. Now, talking about the feet right here, I think they could be better. They're not bad, they're not deal breaking, right? Now take a look at the ones I have here on the M, the bigger ones. Those are kind of like uh, uh, just a little deceiving because they are very thin. They're actually underneath the other feet right there. So they're really not serving too much of a purpose, you know what I mean? But again, stock feet, not the best, not bad. Definitely get the job done. Now looking at the cables on the both of these mice right here, again, not the best, but very, very good for what you get in here on a budget mouse. Clear as day, definitely 
the best cable on any of the mice we've looked at right here. Now I've used my Mira M a lot more than my S, honestly, right here. And you can just see the Mira M cable is much more flexible than the S. The S one's just kind of a little bit stiffy right there. Now the one thing I do not like about the Mira M or the Mira S are the sides with the holes in it. I can't stand holes on the side of my mice. Again, I'm a little bit of a tighter gripper, and again, my pinky and then my thumb will just start hurting after long sessions there. But luckily with the M and the S, these side grips are included. Cover up the holes perfectly and you don't even notice them. So all in all, the Mira M and the Mira S right there. If we compile all that together, two fantastic budget mice. Absolutely amazing. Again, if you're worried about people talking about the build quality, this, that, or the other, again, order it off Amazon. If you get a faulty one, heck, send it back and just exchange it out for another one, you know? No worries whatsoever. Again, I stink and love this mouse. Across the board out of all these right here, it has to be number one. And going right into the price of these guys, you can scoop these up for $39. Again, that's gonna depend on color, because again, you can get both of these in multiple colors, like purples, yellows, oranges, reds, you know what I mean? And I believe it's usually the black one that's 39 bucks as far as both of them right here. So 40 bucks with what you get right here, complete win. All right, so that is our top five budget gaming mice right there, but I wanna pull out some runners up real quick before we conclude this video. Let me go on and just get them right here. And we're just gonna dive in this right, you know what? Let's start right here. This is probably the best place to start, right? Is the glorious mice. We have all of them right here. The O, the O minus, the D and the D minus. We got all of them, you know what I mean? So why weren't they in the top picks right there? These are 50 bucks, absolutely great price right there. Great uh, little value, you know? And that's where I put it, it's a great value. And that's pretty much right where I leave it. I've had so many comments of people talking over time as far as their Model O's faulting, whether it be on the sides or the cable and stuff like that. Now you do get a two year warranty with this mouse, and that's exactly where I would put this mouse. If you're willing to pay 50 bucks for a mouse that's gonna last you for two years, I don't know, do any of us even use mice for two years? I don't know, I sure don't, you know? <laughs> but that's actually where I would put these guys. If you're fine spending 50 bucks for a mouse for two years, I think you're gonna be covered. I'm not too sure how their warranty program works, but I know they have a two years. Can you constantly replace it over and over? I don't know. But all of my mice right here, these have all been paid for by me, not sent to them or not sent to me or anything like that, right? And all of them, I've had a little bit of flex, whether it be the D minus, where the PCB popped out on the bottom, barely pressing. Who's gonna press? Probably nobody, but the fact that it's there is not cool. Side button flex on pretty much all of my copies right here. So again, they're great mice as far as shape and everything like that. I think their build really needs to be uh, upgraded quite a bit right here. And maybe that, that's where it puts it. Like it feels like a budget product. And that's again, why it wasn't in our top list. So again, kind of look at it that way. A glorious mice, uh, put it at 50 bucks for two years and then you'll be fine, depending how the warranty works, right? Next up on our list is the SteelSeries Sensei 310. Again, why the majority of these mice weren't on there is you gotta find these on sale. And a lot of times they are on sale, which is why it's in our runner up here. And talking about, again, all of them being on sale and also the 310, pretty much all these mice we're gonna talk about, you can scoop up for around 30 to 40 bucks pending on sale, which again, majority of the time they are on. But the 310, I love this mouse, absolutely great build. Definitely a relaxed claw or maybe a little bit of fingertip, definitely wider right here, ambient and everything. Fantastic mouse for the price. Absolutely love it. A little bit older, but again, still a great mouse. Death Adder Elite. Definitely a weeding out now that the V2 has come out. Now the Destiny version, you're not gonna be able to find for too cheap, but the Death Adder is the stinking Death Adder. It's a great mouse, palm grip, definitely bigger, you know what I mean? Um, the Elite one, again, you can usually scoop it up these days for around 30, but it is, you can notice it weeding out now that the V2 is out. Great mouse here as well. The Death Adder is just the Death Adder. It's always great, right? Next up, whew, the Rival 310. You all know I love this. Palm Gripper's dream right here. One of my favorite mice. Chunky side buttons. Great shape. Fits into the hand like a stinking glove. Again, you can scoop this up for around 30, 35 bucks all day long lately. You know what I mean? Love this mouse. If you love Palm Grip, or just say if you don't even game with Palm Grip, but you work with Palm Grip, I recommend you trying out the 310. If you like bigger mice, if you fingertip, no no way, no no way ever, the Rival 310, you know what I mean? But if you like Palm Grip, this is a mouse you have to try. Like, again, it is older, yes, but it's still a fantastic mouse. And next up right here, the HyperX Pulse Fire Surge. This mouse is, I don't know, I, I guess it was popular, Right, but now I feel like it's a true underdog, you know what I mean? Think about it like the, uh, what is this, a 305 and a 203. I put this as the same type of shape, but more 
palm to claw right here, whether this guy be in fingertip. Again, it feels quite similar in the hand right here as far as shape and everything. Cable on it is fair, it's decent, nice RGB and everything. So again, I really feel like, and again, you can scoop this up for 40 bucks right now as we're speaking. Great stinking deal. It is a heavier mouse. It is definitely heavier, no denying it, right? But I truly think this mouse is an underdog. And if you don't mind the weight, and again, you like that relaxed claw, it's a little bit of palm, what a mouse to try right here. I can't, I can go on and on about it. This mouse is fantastic. All right, so let's conclude this video up right here and kind of sum it up. Again, all these mice I think are fantastic and are great budget options. You know, the only ones that I've actually had issues with, and I've used all of these and reviewed all of these, by the way. I don't just take them out of the box and talk about them. I actually use them, you know, some longer than the others. And again, the only ones I really had issues with are the Glorious. I put those in here. Because again, I know a lot of people will be asking about them. But I'm going to push them aside. That would be my last pick out of any of these mice right here. But again, as far as these, I think they're just a true value. And at that price, you can't go wrong just trying one of these, right? If you're just kind of like, man, I want to try a different mice. I always tell people you should have two mice on your desk, right? A smaller one and then a bigger one as far as both. Just to dabble with and really truly try them before you're just saying, ah, I hate fingertip or ah, I hate palm, you know? I think they both kind of suit out for uh, different uh, situations. But all these mice right here, as far as the value and cost of them, it's great to just pick one up and try it you know, 30 bucks or 50 bucks for the wireless, you know, 40 bucks for the Viper Mini. You can't go wrong, like, heck, just pick one up and try it out. You really shock yourself to kind of step out of your box and try something different. And I think all of these will be able to open that up for you as far as also not breaking the bank. But hey, please do let me know down in the comments, out of these, which would be your pick? I'm really curious, out of all these, what would be your number one pick that you would scoop up? Or let me know if you went ahead and scooped any of these up or which one you currently use even, you know what I mean? But please also down in the comments, let me know if there's some other mouse that you would have included in this roundup right here. I know there's a lot of other ones, definitely some that you can find on sale, but please let me know which one you would include in this roundup here, and it has to be 50 bucks or under. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on a top budget mice, top five with a few extra sprinkles in there, you know what I mean? Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and I was able to help you out if you're looking at any of these mice or heck, if you were even looking into picking up a budget mouse right here. I hope I was able to help you out and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.